Hello everybody, my name is Jason, and I am back again on my multiplayer Attack of the B-Team server that I started with a couple of my friends, and I wanted to do another tutorial series for you today. Um, what I originally wanted to do was more about these Project Red transportation pipes and the auto crafting, because that's the one feature we really haven't touched on yet, and it's really cool, and it works great in single player games, but if you try to build the stuff on a multiplayer server it will crash it bad like I had to go into MC edit and download the world file and get rid of the stuff that I'd started building which was down there because it crashed the server and the server wasn't coming back up so instead of that I decided to cover my power system today and in here you'll see my little steam dynamos there's water being fed to them from the bottom, and then there's charcoal being fed to them from a tree farm. Now, I'd like to show you the tree farm, but this system was specifically set up that I could set it up once and never have to mess with it again. And as such, the tree farm is encased underground, and I don't really want to go digging it up because it's pretty boring looking. So, I'm going to pop into a tutorial world, and I am going to show you guys how it's made and kind of what I was thinking when I designed it. All right, so here's my system. It's a basic little tree farm that feeds into a furnace that goes to these steam dynamos. It's not very complex, but it is extendable. Uh, you can make this farm as big as you want. You can extend these steam dynamos for quite a ways, and you can generate about as much power as you could possibly want in Attack of the B-Team. Uh, the whole point of it was is that it's a closed system. Once you set it up and you give it the initial saplings and a little bit of charcoal to get it boosted up, you never have to mess with it again. It's not going to back up. It's never going to run out of power unless you just use an ass ton amount. But it's, it's never going to break on you. It'll keep going and keep going. And that's what I really wanted here. Uh, I didn't want to concentrate on power and just more power and different types of power like I kind of do in a lot of Feed the Beasts and, and, and those type of mod packs. I wanted just enough power that I can set it. I never have to mess with it again. And I can go and I can enjoy uh, things like archaeology and the witchcraft and the mine factory reloaded and galactocraft. And I would have this power system working for me and I didn't have to revisit it and go oh I need more efficient power like you often do in Feed the Beast so this is what it is and uh, it's really pretty simple to make it's not very expensive to make but uh, let's get started alright here's what you are gonna need you're gonna need an aqueous accumulator you're gonna need a planter and a harvester for mine factory reloaded and you're gonna need upgrade lapis for both of those you're also gonna need a redstone furnace uh, you're going to need a crescent hammer just as a general tool. You're going to need uh, two pneumatic servos. You're going to need some redstone, uh, I think four. You're going to need one redstone torch, two redstone comparators, uh, one hopper. Uh, you're going to need some item ducts. You're going to need some fluid ducts. Uh, I have the transparent ones here, but you can use the opaque. It doesn't matter. Um, you're going to need some water buckets, uh, some steam dynamos however many you want I've got this set up for five uh, you're gonna need some uh, leadstone energy conduits and you're gonna need a couple chests now the first thing you're gonna do is you are going to kinda of carve this out of the ground you, on this one side you're gonna need a two deep hole that's three wide you're gonna put some water in it and right in the middle you're gonna put an aqueous accumulator then you're gonna make this kinda of catty corner shape and it's not that big deal, but at the very end, you're going to have a 6 by 7 hole. And right here, you're going to put a block, just whatever block, and then put the planter on top of it. And you're going to want, let's see, you need one more item duct here. Alright, we're going to need an item, item duct here. And to make this little L shape, or I guess it's a T now, and then some leadstone conduit coming from the planter inwards. Now we're going to make, on the next row up, you're going to need some fluid duct. And that's going to go under all your dynamos. 
right here you're going to need a redstone torch in that nook. You're going to go through your little catty corner with some redstone energy conduits. You're also going to go up on each of these item ducts that were there. And then you are ready to make everything on the surface, which is quite a bit. So we have, we're going to start out with some leadstone conduits right here along the top, right above where those fluoducts were. And if you have the hardened energy conduits or the redstone energy conduits, you go ahead and put those there. Everything else can stay leadstone, but eventually you want to upgrade these four at least. Then you're going to want to put the steam dynamos down. And you're going to use your crescent hammer to, if they're not facing the right way, to point them the way that's shown here. I'm also going to put one more leadstone energy conduit there with a steam dynamo pointing towards it. On the back side of this, we're going to put item ducts along each of the dynamos and then a chest here at the end. Then we're going to have that redstone furnace right next to the chest. When we right click on that, we are going to want the configuration to be that the uh, output is out on the right side and the input is in the back. Now behind the redstone furnace we're going to have another item duct and then another chest that's connected to the harvester. And then we're going to have a block next to the harvester and on this edge we're going to have some more item duct away and we're going to have a chest here. That's going to be an overflow chest. We'll discuss that later. Now you need like a floating platform here. It's kind of in this shape here. Well, it's exactly in this shape here. Uh, you don't actually need stone, but you do need the torches there. What's going to happen is that this back here that we're going to cover in a minute is an automatic shutoff for the harvester. So what's going to happen is you're going to have these big oak trees, and you're going to have them like half harvested, and then some more are going to grow. And what's going to happen is you're going to have some dark spots under here. And if that happens while there's plantable surface there, the planter is going to try and put a sapling there. And then the sapling will uproot because it's completely dark. And then the planter is going to put another one and another one and another one there. And so what that's going to do is it's basically going to dump all your saplings onto the ground and they're going to despawn. And you don't want that because then you don't actually have a tree farm anymore. You just have something that's sitting there. And so I set day. And I think that's pretty much covered everything. The last thing to cover is this automatic shutoff. What you're going to want is a hopper with a comparator faced away towards the hopper that's faced away from this chest that is right-clicked so that it's turned on. And then you're going to need redstone coming over here to this block next to the harvester. Now, you're going to need some more things. Those are all the pieces, but we still need to do some work on them. We're going to need to take all this stuff. And the lapis upgrade chips, we are going to right click on the harvester and the planter and put those in there. What that does is makes them a 5x5 five five farm. They start out as a 3x3 three three farm, that makes it a 5x5 five five farm. Then we're going to need to take one of these pneumatic servos and we are going to right click on this item duct right below the chest. And then we are going to right click on this one right next to the chest. Those are going to upgrade those. We're going to take our crescent hammer and go to the junctions and make them so they're pointed outwards. Then we're going to take an empty hand. And we're going to right click on the bottom junction and we're going to leave it as blacklist and we're going to put oak. Oak wood there. We're going to go to the redstone control and we're going to hit ignored. That'll turn it on and anytime something that's not an oak wood gets put in that chest, which is going to be saplings and apples. It's going to get sent down below. We're going to come over here and we're going to right click on this one. We're going to put the oak in the middle again, but we're going to hit it to whitelist. And then we're going to go to redstone control, ignored. What that's going to do is it's going to take all that oak wood that's not going out the bottom and sending it out there. Now for this last junction right here, we're going to right click it. And it's going to point out, and since we have that redstone torch underneath it, it's just going to pump whatever is in here, which is only going to be charcoal, into the servos. Now, there's one last thing. When you set that hopper down, it'll connect like that. You're going to want to right-click it with the crescent hammer twice to disconnect it from the system. 
Then you're going to go into this hopper and you're going to put your four shovels or just any non-stackable item. And what that does is it's going to shut off the system when this chest is almost completely full of charcoal. Once it's more than 80% full, because it's more full than this hopper, it will the comparator will start to uh, emit a signal, and then eventually when it's pretty much completely full, it'll turn off the harvester. What that'll do is it'll just keep the system from just getting tons and tons and tons of wood in it, because if this all gets full of wood, this gets full of charcoal, this gets full of wood and charcoal, and this gets full of wood, well, there's no telling what this is going to do. It might act up. It might not. Who knows? But then, all the wood's going to go along that path, and everything else is coming down here. Now, because this is closer than this, um, this output chest, all the saplings are going to try to go here first. And they're going to fill up this area uh, with, uh, they're going to fill up all those spots with saplings. I didn't actually mean to leave this on from the last take. But it's going to fill up everything with saplings. And then when it's completely full of saplings, uh, the saplings, the extra saplings are going to come out here. So now we're pretty much ready to start. We can go ahead and put this charcoal back in the system. And then let's go ahead and throw the some saplings in this chest. So you're going to see them going down there and coming into the planter. And then they'll automatically start planting. You can see it there in the background. We're going to take some bone meal and speed this along. There we go. And you can see the wood starting getting sent to the furnace. The furnace is processing it. And charcoal is getting sent to this chest and then straight back out. And that's pretty much it. That is the system. The only other problem we have is that eventually this chest will get completely full of apples and saplings because this is going to fill up with saplings and excess are going to come out here. And we don't want that because then it'll back up the entire system and then make a complete mess of it. So there are a couple solutions we can do to that and I'll show you them in a second. But that is pretty much the entirety of the farm. I hope this wasn't too hard to follow and I will try and get the world upload somewhere so that you can take a look at it right away. Alright, so the last problem we have is the uh, overflow chest. If you're making the computerized mass storage system that I've been making in my last two videos, you can take this overflow chest and just connect a routed interface pipe, add an extractor chip, and then just send it all back to your main storage system. It doesn't produce that many saplings and apples, so you'll probably never even notice that the extra are in there. However, if you want a truly closed system, you can do something like this. You just replace the chest with a dispenser, and then when you put the items in there, it dumps them all into the lava below. You just use a comparator and do an inverter, and then uh, to one of these redstone timers from Project Red, and that's a pretty cool solution if you don't mind losing all the apples and the saplings. If you do mind, you can always use something like this. The deep storage units from Mine Factory Reloaded. There's some videos out there about them. They're kind of neat. They can only hold one item, but they can hold up to like 2 billion of them. So they're basically infinite storage for saplings and apples as far as the system's concerned. So you can use any of those, or you can come up with one of your own. As long as you empty that chest, that's all that really matters. And uh, it'll put the last bit of polish on our already pretty awesome power system. Okay, if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, leave me some feedback. Tell me what you thought. Uh, give me a like, maybe. Uh, if you're not subscribed, I might have something in the future for subscribing for. I'm not really sure where I'm going with these videos. I do want to do one more about the crafting options with the transport pipes that we've been using in the other videos. Uh, even though they crash the hell out of a multiplayer server, they are still kind of useful 
and I know a lot of people play single player, so uh, that would be a good video to do. I'm not really sure what else I'm going to do videos on. I do have a cool mob farm down here that uh, gets me both liquid XP and mob essence. So uh, it kind of can toggle between the two. So if people are interested in that, I might be able to do a video on that. Uh, just let me know, and I will see you next time. Bye.